Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it, is, it is such a pleasure to be here uh, on this beautiful day and to close out Earth Week here at Liberty State Park in Jersey City, such a beautiful city. And we are so fortunate uh, to be joined by uh, my Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Justice and Equity. Where are you, Olivia? Right here. Ah, there, <laughs> there's Olivia. And so, and, and so many others uh, who, uh, who we'll introduce shortly. Uh, I wanted to, to share uh, how important to the state that this place is and what it represents. I was just had the, the, the good fortune of, of speaking to the students here behind us about how parks, these great open spaces, how they are for everyone, no matter where you come from or how much money you make or what you look like or where you live or who you love, spaces like this are for all of us. And we have great plans to build upon that very principle here in Liberty State Park through the interior restoration that we are working on with the community because everyone is a part of that progress. And Olivia will speak to how we all get to be a part of progress, that as we work to enhance open spaces like Liberty State Park, that in doing that, we do greater justice. We can help to build pathways for people to connect with one another, to overcome historic uh, divisions among people that don't belong here. They don't belong in New Jersey. We are a place of welcome and opportunity where we reach out our hand to one another, where we lift everyone up. And today, we're here to lift up a very important symbol Thanks to the work of Senator Cunningham, thanks to the work of our Department of Environmental Protection and Rob Rodriguez, our uh, superintendent here at Liberty, who procured uh, the new Mississippi state flag to put to rest a historic symbol of division and let us all rise together. I am proud to introduce my partner in all things positive, the very first Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Justice and Equity at DEP, Miss Olivia Glenn. But before we do that, I would ask you all to join one of our students who will lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance. We stand for the flag for Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. Olivia? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today for this really incredibly special occasion. And I want to thank Acting Commissioner La Tourette for that wonderful introduction. And I also want to thank these wonderful young people from Jersey City for leading us in the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Can we give them another round of applause? We are here today because we know and we understand that symbols matter, especially in our environmental justice communities. When we think about environmental justice, what first comes to mind is protecting the environment and health of those communities. But environmental justice is also about respect and meaningful involvement. We must show all of our New Jerseyans that we respect them. Green space, green space is a precious commodity in New Jersey, especially in our highly urbanized communities. Environmental justice does not only offer access to and enjoyment of open space, 
but also the provisions to ensure that all feel like they belong. And it is important that the residents of our overburdened and underrepresented communities feel that belonging, feel that welcome, feel that this space is an extension of home, and feel that this space, as well as other public places, are preserved, managed, and planned with our values individually and collectively in mind, woven into the very tapestry of how we define community. Here at Liberty State Park, the 50 state flags together with 13 American flags were installed on Morris Peston Drive in the lead up to the opening of Liberty State Park on Flag Day on June 14, 1976. And each year since, from April through November, these flags fly proudly, displayed in the order of each state that joined the Union. And for our state, New Jersey, it is situated as uh, between Delaware and Pennsylvania, since our state was the third state to join the Union in 1787. Since 1976, the flags of Liberty State Park have always been an iconic feature that people look forward to seeing each spring. The flags project patriotism and unity. Two years ago, when Governor Phil Murphy ordered that the Mississippi flag not be among the state flags raised along Liberty State Park's Freedom Way, he offered a simple yet profound explanation, and I quote, the Confederate symbol displayed on the Mississippi state flag is reprehensible and does not reflect our values of inclusivity and equality. That flag carried a Confederate battle emblem, and because the governor and the people who manage this park care about the amazing and diverse people who use it, they could not allow such a symbol of oppression and white supremacy to continue to fly here. It was replaced with the American flag until now. Today, we raise the newly designed state flag of Mississippi, featuring a magnolia, stars, and the words, in God we trust, that was approved by 73% of Mississippi voters in November. The Confederate insignia on the old flag represented hate, succession, and division. Its message was the antithesis and a mockery of what this park is meant to symbolize, liberty and freedom. What replaces it is a symbol of inclusion and unity. And now I am pleased to direct Liberty State Park Superintendent Robert Rodriguez and Park Maintenance Specialist Andy Rampersad to raise the new Mississippi state flag. Yes, let's give it a round of applause. Yes, absolutely befitting for a round of applause. Thank you so much. This is just one important step of many toward a more perfect union. And as I said before, symbols matter, especially in today's political climate. We all know the history of segregation, oppression, and division that was particularly felt in southern states like Mississippi. And yes, Mississippi did the right thing by redesigning its flag. However, evidence of division still exists. In January, three members of the U.S. House of Representatives from Mississippi refused to certify the electoral college votes of Arizona and Pennsylvania. Though there was no evidence of election impropriety in either state, they continued to object to the results that gave the victory to Joseph Biden and Kamala Harris. 
Their efforts to undermine the democratic process clearly signal that we have much more to do to continue to unify the nation, but certainly we do have a lot to celebrate today. I am deeply heartened to see that the people of Mississippi made their voices heard and succeeded in changing their flag to be more inclusive. I hope that they will continue to hold their lawmakers accountable, as we all should, and that the Magnolia State moves forward in a way that continues to unite rather than divide its residents. Before I end, I'd like to talk about some other efforts to promote diversity and inclusion here at Liberty State Park. I am proud to say that as we continue to work toward the remediation of the 234-acre interior of the park, which is to my right, and for some of you it is to your right and some of you it's to your left, that work is underway. And we have reached out to the local community through ongoing public stakeholder meetings and through public surveys to learn how the community would like to see this space developed. The survey was available in English, Spanish, and seven other languages. And we put in this extra critical effort because we know that every park visitor has a voice that we should hear. From that survey, we heard from over 3,600 people through both online and printed surveys. The feedback came from all ages, ranging from local school children, like the ones who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance today. We need to make sure that they all filled out surveys. If they haven't, we need to make sure they do that today. Some of them said that they did. I hear, oh, thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK. Woohoo. That's That is democracy in action. That's civic engagement. Thank you so much. Carry that forward with you, and our country will continue to be a better place. So overall, 11% of the responses were from those 18 and younger. And 75% of the survey responses came from residents within zip codes in Jersey City. We know that Jersey City residents truly love this park and have opinions they'd like to share. This feedback is critical if we are to make sure this community knows and understands we as the state consider their opinions valuable and their priorities important as we prepare for the upcoming work on the interior. Liberty State Park is an amazing national and international destination, complete with historic spaces, but it's also a local park that must meet the needs of its diverse community. I look forward to the day that the interior restoration of the park will be complete for the enjoyment of the people of Jersey City and visitors throughout New Jersey and beyond. And now it is my pleasure to invite some local voices who have shown their dedication and their passion for Liberty State Park. First, I would like to introduce Councilwoman Denise Ridley. Let's give her a round of applause. Good afternoon. Uh, I bring you greetings today from our Mayor Stephen Phillip and the Jersey City Municipal Council. Today is a wonderful day. Uh, we are so happy to be here in Liberty State Park. Thank you to my uh, colleagues in government for today and for your advocacy uh, in making this happen. Thank you, Sam, for all the work that you do here in the park. Uh, Jersey City is the most diverse city in the nation. So this is fitting that we are raising this flag today, a flag that is inclusive of all that this country represents. You know, we spoke the words earlier with the children of one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And I feel like this is what the new version of the flag is representing because the old one didn't. So, you know, for us to raise this flag here with so many different cultures and ethnicities in Jersey City, it helps to make everyone feel included. And this park is a place for everyone in Jersey City. So I thank you. Thank you all for who were all those who were involved in having this done and making sure that this was a success and raising this new flag today. We thank you from the bottom of, my heart, of our hearts in Jersey City. And we now will look up and remember what was there and know what's there now as we run, walk, and drive uh, through Liberty Park, a park that we love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. And next, I will call up Senator Sandra Cunningham. And as she's coming, I want to thank her for her 
advocacy and her proactivity as she wrote a letter to the governor noting that the Confederate symbol was still hanging on a flag that we, that we hung in the park. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you and good, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, one, because this is such a beautiful park, um, but it's beautiful to see people here, people who represent what Jersey City looks like, and that is the diversity of Jersey City. Um, it's beautiful, and it is as beautiful as this park, and when you look around, you see the diversity, even in the colors of the trees. So I'm honored to be here. I do want to just take this opportunity. I do want to thank Governor Murphy. Um, when I spoke with Governor Murphy about the park, actually, to uh, go back a second, a constituent came into my office one afternoon and said, Senator, I just want to know, have you seen the Confederate flag flying in Liberty State Park? And I said, no, I haven't. He said, get in your car and ride down there and see. And I did that. I went down, came down to the park and saw the Confederate flag. When I called Governor Murphy, he was more than willing to say, OK, the flag needs to come down. He jumped on it immediately, and I do thank him for that. And I also thank the governor of Mississippi and the state legislature there and his committee to design a new um, I'm disappearing under here, here, I hope you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> who uh, designed this new flag. The wonderful thing about this flag is its name, In God We Trust. I think there are only of three other states in the nation that use um, the phrase, In God We Trust. And that's what we do every single day. And I know that this flag will continue to fly beautifully in our park, Liberty State Park. Thank you very much. Enjoy the park and enjoy the flag. Thank you so much, Senator Cunningham. And next we will call up the incomparable Assemblywoman Angela McKnight. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Just watching the flag raised to the top, I was in awe. And I'm happy to know that it, once again, is standing with all the plethora of flags here in unity. But I wanna just take your attention to the children. We have shown today the children that when you work together, amazingly things can happen. We are giving them the roadmap of what advocacy and democracy is. And to the people in Minnesota, I'm about to say the wrong state, in Mississippi, in Mississippi 73 percent of them voted yes. That shows the unity and change. Jersey City is very diverse. And we have a plethora of cultures here who will, again, walk and drive throughout this park. And the children will be able to know what they did today. So for the children who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance, I want you to go back and tell your fellow classmates and your family that you were part of making change today. And when you get older, I want you to tell your grandchildren and your children on April the 23rd, 2021, you made history. And to everyone, all the advocates who's here today, I want to say thank you. And God we trust is on the Mississippi flag. And I trust God and I trust you all that we will continue to do all that we can to make sure that we all live in peace and harmony. So thank you and I look forward to continuing the work because the work is not done. This moment today, we need to embrace it, but tomorrow let's continue to fight for what is right. So thank you again and may God bless you.
thank you, Assemblywoman. And I also want to just publicly give you credit for how you engaged with us in the stakeholder meetings. After we completed the first survey for the interior, you told us that we could do more to hear even more community voices. And that's what pushed us to get that survey translated into even more languages. And we got that feedback from children as well. So thank you for your dedication and your commitment and for holding us accountable to continue to do more. We appreciate you. So next, I am delighted to invite a wonderful colleague, uh, Walter Mugden, who is the Acting Regional Administrator for EPA's Region 2, which includes New Jersey, New York, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner, and thank you, uh, Acting Commissioner Latourette. It's a delight to be here. Uh, in addition to the jurisdictions that uh, the Deputy Commissioner mentioned, uh, we are also proud to have eight federally recognized Indian nations within the jurisdiction of EPA Region 2. So uh, I bring you greetings uh, for this uh, wonderful Earth Week, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge as well uh, Councilwoman Bradley and uh, Assemblywoman McKnight and, of course, State Senator Cunningham. Thank you for your words. Uh, it's a real honor to be able to stand with these fine public servants and with all of you today in solidarity uh, on the fundamental issue of equality for all and justice in all forms, applied without favor and free of bias. Uh, so I, I've worked uh, at EPA for almost 46 years, and I have seen firsthand that discrimination most certainly does occur in the environmental sector as it occurs elsewhere. Poor air quality, polluted water, contaminated land, not only put individuals and families at higher risk of serious and costly diseases, they also discourage new development that can improve communities and create much needed new jobs. These impacts have a lifelong cascading effect. Limiting the economic possibilities of overburdened communities only makes it harder to break the cycle of illness and poverty. President Biden has recognized the interconnected crises facing our black, Latino, tribal, and low-income communities, and he has set an agenda to make progress on all these fronts. Symbols matter, words matter, and actions really matter. So President Biden's Rebuild Stronger agenda promises to make groundbreaking investments that'll cut pollution from the power sector, that'll modernize water infrastructure, including the lead service line pipes that still uh, bring our drinking water into so many homes and have to be replaced, and clean up legacy pollution that has gone unaddressed for far too long particularly in many communities of color. Uh, in my organization at Region 2 of EPA, we're gearing up for that challenge. <clears throat> the President's executive order on tackling the climate crisis at home and abroad includes, among other things, establishment of a White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council, known, of course, as WEJAC, because government simply can't function without acronyms. Uh, Five of the 26 WEJAC representatives are from Region 2 jurisdictions. I'm very proud of that. The council is chaired by Peggy Shepard, whom I expect uh, some of you know very well. Uh, Peggy's co-founder and executive director of WE Act for Environmental Justice from West Harlem, just across the river. Hailing from New Jersey, Dr. Nikki Sheets is also on the WEJAC. He's currently the director of the Center for the Urban Environment of the John S. Watson Institute for Public Policy at Thomas Edison State University. And New Jersey boasts another member of WEJAC, Maria Lopez Nunez, with the Ironbound Community Corporation in Newark, also not far from here. Among many other important uh, roles, the WEJAC members will provide recommendations on what's being called Justice 40 to a White House Interagency Council. Justice 40. Uh, the President's executive order creates a government-wide Justice 40 initiative with the goal of delivering 40 percent of the overall benefits of all relevant federal investments to disadvantaged communities and tracks performance toward that goal through the establishment of an environmental justice scorecard. The order initiates the development of a climate and environmental justice screening tool building off of EPA's EJ screen screening tool which helps us to identify <coughs> disadvantaged communities and overburdened communities 
and to support this Justice, Justice 40 initiative and inform equitable decision making across the federal government. Our EJ program staff have met uh, with New Jersey uh, DEP Deputy Commissioner Glenn and her colleagues, and we look forward to our continued close coordination with New Jersey. We're excited about initiatives that will be locally led, community driven solutions to revitalize local economies and improve environmental and public health outcomes. We've worked with Jersey City for many years on brownfields, and we're so, so impressed with the incredible work that Jersey City has been doing this. Uh, and so we hope that you'll continue that. We look forward to our, our many, many more years of a very productive partnership in that arena. Uh, we have a number of other grant programs, not just brownfields, but other grant programs as well that can provide financial assistance, including our EJ small grants, EJ collaborative problem solving grants, and our state EJ cooperative agreement grants. So stay tuned on, on these and other funding opportunities at the national and regional levels. There's great satisfaction when we can work collaboratively with our local and our state partners to help communities and work to achieve a better society and a cleaner planet. And how fitting it is that this week, when we're all thinking about protecting our planet, when it's Earth Day and Earth Week, we also mark the critical intersection between protecting our environment and protecting our environmental justice communities and the cause of liberty and justice for all, the phrase in that Pledge of Allegiance in which the students led us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Acting Regional Administrator. Uh, it has truly been a pleasure to work with you and your team. And if you don't mind, they've been so phenomenal. If they could just raise their hands, just want you to know that they're really here with a presence as well. The folks from the EPA that are here. Okay, we have Anisha Mena Sempas and Kalana Joseph right back there. They have been incredible partners and we're grateful for them. And also, too, uh, I can just take a moment to note the DEP employees who are here. If you guys just want to wave your hands. We also have some community advocates who are here, as well as the Friends of Liberty State Park. If you all want to wave your hands as well, so people know that you're here. And it looks like we may have some actual park visitors who are here as well, especially a little guy who's clapping his hands today. We recognize you for being here too. <laughs> oh, that's Senator Cunningham's grandson. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Assemblywoman McKnight's grandson. Yes, delighted to have you here. And now we have our final speaker for today, Mr. Keith Bodden, who is the chair of the NAACP's New Jersey State Chapter, uh, and he chairs the Committee on Armed Forces and Veterans Affairs. He's also the past president of the Morris County branch of the NAACP. Thank you so much for being here. I took my shot. Uh, De Deputy Glenn, I want to thank everyone, distinguished elected officials and uh, civil servants that serve New Jersey and the federal government. And youngsters over there, I am an immigrant. I came to the USA after World War II on the FAST visa. Those members, those families that served in World War II came here quickly, no issues asked. I started my public school as a white student in the Hillsboro School District of Tampa, Florida. Then my dad, British Navy, World War II, 3946, decided to go to Brooklyn because he was now in the real estate business. I became a Brooklyn Eagle newsboy. And at the first newsboy event, Hotel St. George, 1951, Jackie Robinson was the speaker, the primary speaker. Jackie Robinson said something. I am an NACP member. And that started my NACP heritage. And young people, keep in mind, 
no matter who you are, where you came from, you can excel, be what you want to be, and be happy. I've been happy for 60 years in July. My wife of 60 years, Yvonne, uh, she's from the Bronx. She's a foreigner. She's a foreigner from the Bronx. <laughs> but what I want to say to you, 1951 by 1956, I was enrolled in Pennsylvania Military College under the GI Bill of Rights that my dad also inherited as a student. And in 1960, I was commissioned an officer in the United States Army Chemical Corps. That started my environmental climate justice career and also advocacy. Once you're in the chemical core, you understand why it's important to be an advocacy. Young people, keep going. Remember that. Be happy in what you do, but never say failure because you'll always succeed. Then after, I became a special assistant in the Ford Nixon administration, special assistant developing the Toxic Substance Act for industry. After that, my NACP heritage continued, and I was coordinator and chair of the Pennsylvania Bicentennial NACP event. 1976, and we're going to celebrate it before the other bicentennial, uh, tri tri pardon me, tricentennial coming up sometime this year, uh, sometime in this century. I don't think I'm going to be there. But what I want to say, my NACP heritage continues, and I bring you greetings from the New Jersey NACP State Conference founded 1911 and now in the centennial year. We continue to be strong, we continue to aim for perfection for the Constitution and the U.S. Bill of Rights for all citizens, including immigrants like me. But what I wanted to say under my NACP heritage, I was proud to say not only was I German, but I was a black African German. And that's what I became in Brooklyn, and that's what I continue. Because where you came from, it's important. And celebrate your heritage. Keep it. Don't lose it. But every time I come here, I look at the Statue of Liberty, and I remember my heritage as an immigrant. And the other thing, when I stand here, this is a NAACP Heritage Park. Morris Pesson was a civil rights activist in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. These were the difficult years. He found time to preserve this land, and it became Liberty State Park. His son, Sam continued that NACP heritage. And I'm proud to say, as an NACP member and a lifetime environmental climate justice activist and professional, that's how I made my living, I join the Friends of Liberty State Park to preserve this land why? Because it's an NACP heritage park. And that is why the last civil rights that we all have to work for is the environment and the climate. And that's why our president, present president, is working towards that. It's the basic civil right, environmental climate justice. And I thank you all, friends, of Liberty State Park, put your hand up, please. I am now a comrade with you, and we'll continue that fight to bring this park 
under the NAACP heritage and preserve it and move on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Biden, for your work over the decades and just the wonderful legacy that you are. And we thank the NAACP and all the community voices who have been a part of shaping what we do in the park today and every day. And so I just want to thank everyone again for joining us today for this really remarkable occasion. I look forward to working together in the future in the spirit of meaningful involvement to continue to foster equity and justice for Jersey City and communities across New Jersey. Thank you again.